Hi, I'm David and I made these books. Uh, this is a book called 12,000 Miles. Um, it's a photo book or photo zine uh, and it shipped with this smaller booklet that I made, kind of a behind the scenes, um, what I learned in the process of making it. So I'm gonna cover what's in these first and then uh, go over the process of making it, uh, everything I learned and um, just sharing my experience uh, making this because I learned everything that it took to make this project on the internet so i'm giving back to you guys okay so this book is uh it's printed on a 14 point cover this is a semi-gloss coating so one side has got a gloss the other side is uncoated uh, the interior pages are 100 pound text and they're coated in matte white it is perfect bound, so it just means it's uh, bound with glue instead of any kind of uh, string binding. The dimensions on it are eight and a half by 11, so it's just a standard sized uh, printer paper. And it's 44 pages in total, and it cost me $17 per book to make. Uh, I printed about 60 of these. Um, and I've got a few left for sale still, so if you are interested after watching this video, you want to check one of these out yourself, uh, hit me up in the comments, or you're welcome to send me an email, and uh, I'll get one out to you. So, uh, <clears throat> shipped with that, and then as I mentioned, this is a smaller booklet, so in here, I have some of the information about uh, the, the cameras that I use to shoot it, the lenses, some film information. This, this whole book was all shot on film, as you could see by the details here, which uh, it all wraps around. So this is like a kind of contact sheet. Um, and also in this booklet is a index so this shows each photo uh, all the information where it was taken um, it, what it was scanned on the dimensions that it was scanned at so i included this just if you are considering making one of these books yourself um, i feel like this is a, a pretty cool thing to be able to, to see you know the resolution that that it was printed at you can compare it some of them are higher some of them are lower and uh, you can see what works best. So uh, that's the book. I'll go ahead and flip through a few of the pages just so you can see what we're getting into. Have a little introduction here. This is pretty much the only text um, written. And then we just go to the spreads. <clears throat> and I'll just flip through a few of these. Not to give the rest of the book away, there's quite a few more pages, so if you are interested um, and you need to see the rest of it, go ahead and buy it. All right, so a little bit about the process of making it. Uh, first thing I would recommend doing if you're considering making a book is uh, choose a theme. Obviously, I'm sure you've considered that yourself, so for me, uh, the theme was just adventure. I was just driving around on road trips and exploring. That's something that's always inspired me. Uh, and I'm always curious what, you know, if there's a road I've never been down, I want to drive it and see what's out there. So uh, I took this project as an opportunity to uh, basically go out and just travel around, uh, devoting time specifically to photography. I'm not trying to, you know, make it something that you're doing on the side or you're trying to rush and, and see maybe you have time to stop somewhere. Uh, these trips that I took were almost completely photography focused and that's something that I hadn't really done before. Um, so 
started the year off, flew out to Kauai and spent a couple of weeks just driving around the island, camping and exploring, shooting pictures. Uh, then this was later in the year, in the summer, uh, I was down in San Diego and so I took a trip uh, across the desert there, out to Tucson and up to Sedona and like this on uh, Highway 8 and Highway 10, there's nothing out there so that was really cool to explore some of the ghost towns and empty places. Uh, this was in the fall. I took a trip with my uh, girlfriend at the time. We drove up to Canada, went to Banff and Jasper and put a lot of miles on and had an awesome time exploring. And then this trip was at the end of the year but in December. Uh, I drove down through California, um, went along into the Redwoods uh, and on, we spent a little bit of time in San Francisco and then down in LA, shot some, some city kind of street stuff there. And then on the way back to Highway 395 up all the way through Reno and um, on the other side of Sierra Nevadas and just tons of cool stuff to see. I mean, you could spend t this trip alone, I could have spent, you know, a few weeks on, which I did. Uh, and so yeah, these are just, I'll just go through these pictures um, and you can get a sense of what the trip was like for me. And as you can see, I'm shooting on film uh, with a lot of this. And so that was a learning process, just experimenting with different types of cameras. I had 35 millimeter, I had uh, 120. This is a, a panoramic camera, Russian camera that I got on eBay. So I was just learning about kind of fixing cameras at the same time. Um, and one thing I should mention is this was a year long project. So I started this in January and I finished it in December. Uh, I just felt it was important to give myself a deadline. Otherwise I'll probably still be working on it. And along the way, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, we got engaged and this photo was taken uh, on a timer with a, a Yashica mat 124G kind of hanging from a tripod and I actually got it, got the photo, got the exposure, got focus, ran over and got the ring out. So that's a good memory from the trip. That's the LA aqueduct, which I'm not sure if I was supposed to be in. Uh, this is a little half frame camera. It's a Fuji TW3, super weird camera. And that's a Olympus. As you can see, just tons of driving and exploring. Uh, it's one place I just feel really inspired. So this is at the end of the project. I'm uh, kind of starting to load the photos into a Lightroom library. And of course I'm doing this throughout the year, learning as I'm going, you know, I've got some issues that I would see during one shoot and, you know, sort it out. Maybe it was the film related or, or lens related or the camera. Um, and so I'm, just showing you how many photos I end up with. Of course, I shot a lot. I mean, I have, it, I have the details of exactly how much I shot here in this little book, but I mean, it was dozens of rolls of film. And I, if I was shooting digital, I'm sure it would be immensely more than this. Uh, and so this did feel somewhat manageable, but as you can see, um, I ended up with thousands of pictures. So, uh, yeah, so that's the photo library that I ended up with. And uh, next I'm gonna talk about uh, the design process. So really for me, this breaks down into two parts. Um, shooting obviously is its own huge aspect of it. And then equally as important is the design process. And for me, I honestly hadn't spent that much time looking at photo books. I mean, I was aware of them. I, you know, flip through them every now and then, but I hadn't really thought about everything that goes into a book and uh, like more of the specific design aspects of it. And so 
what I did was go to my local bookshop and uh, just start flipping through them. And I live in Portland, Oregon, and so I have a Powell's bookstore in my neighborhood. So it's a it was an amazing resource. It's the kind of place where you can bring like a tape measure or a ruler and uh, get a huge stack of books and nobody bothers you or talks to you for hours. And so I just put in headphones and just look at books and um, of course support your local bookstores. If you're gonna do this, you know, buy something. Um, and I did, you know, I bought some stuff too. Uh, and I'm going through these really, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at, uh, you know, the layouts, the types of paper, the dimensions, the, the size of the book, uh, the covers. Uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, something that really stuck with me with these ideas of contact sheets. And as you can see in the cover of the book, I, it's pretty heavily inspired by uh, this contact sheet idea. So that's something I, I found early on and was intrigued by. Um, yeah, and I'm looking at binding, uh, lots of different ways you can wrap a book and yeah, there I've got my ruler with me. So just, uh, uh, this is another concept that I actually really used um, here on the front page. Um, and then I have another layout that's got the same feeling on the back page. Um, and so that's something obviously very much inspired by this book, which I don't know what it was. Um, yeah, I'm looking at here, the captions, the way, you know, the size of the text, um, colors, uh, I also got a lot of these books from my local library, so maybe you don't have access to a bookstore like Powell's, but uh, I'm sure a lot of local libraries would have access to books uh, like these. So whatever you can do to uh, take in and kind of learn what other people are doing, I would recommend spending the time to do that. Um, or, you know, maybe don't do that and just go with your gut if you're confident with yourself. So this is the first step uh, in my design process. From that Lightroom library, I had chosen about, I think I chose my top 200 photos, just kind of arbitrary number, trying to cut down on you know anything that I didn't quite feel was good enough to make it in. Um, so the next thing I did, exported from Lightroom, and I brought them into a program called Sketch, which is used for a UI design. You could use Photoshop or um, you know any any other program really. It, this is, I use Sketch just because it's an easy way to drag around a whole bunch of layers and you can make grids pretty easily. Uh, so I just brought the brought these images in all on their own layers, put a little book layout behind them and then just started experimenting with spreads. Uh, I, you know, was able to kind of quickly come up with some ideas. I hadn't really, I still was struggling with the idea of a theme and I, I wanted it, to feel you know coherent and consistent, uh, and I did struggle with feeling like the body of work wasn't necessarily as coherent as I would have liked it to been, and so I spent a, quite a bit of time just laying out uh, you know different spreads. I had two monitors going, so I was able to as much as I could um, you know spread out digitally. I'm going to get to the non-digital aspect of it shortly, but. Uh, for me, staying digitally just like helps me work so much faster. I mean, I, I did end up printing a lot of these out and moving them around on a on a table, but uh, you know, this way I can just quickly make changes, pull in other photos, get rid of ones that I didn't think were working, and uh, so from there, when I feel like I had a good number of spreads that I felt confident about, uh, I did some printing, and so you can see on that photo I've got them laid out. These pictures are printed. Uh, just really cheap paper. They're laser printed. Um, I didn't pay much for these. I cut them myself just to save some money. So I had a, I think I may have printed like all 200 possibly. I've got a huge stack of them here. And I uh, pretty much just started printing photos and this way I could see them. You know, this is kind of the first time I'd seen them out of the computer. Uh, obviously they were film. Um, so I did see the negatives, but just uh, from there, I scanned those in and did all the um, color correction and exposure changes. So, as you can see, I got tons of these going, um, and I just experimented with uh, different layouts. 
and different spreads uh, and also the order of the pages. Uh, up until I sort of felt like I had something going on. I, I was like feeling a little more confident in the direction of things. And I did, another thing I would recommend is early on like this, if you've got a friend who you trust or another photographer, um, or maybe somebody who isn't a photographer and you just think they have a good eye or I don't know, they're just cool. Take it over to them uh, and get somebody's eyes on it because it's really hard of, to edit your own work. I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, you get attached to this stuff. Like there's photos in here that I, you know, I really liked because I remember being there. I'm emotionally attached to the moment and uh, maybe it's really not that great of a photo. So it's great if you can get other people's eyes on it because they'll tell you uh, they don't, they weren't there. They're not attached to it. And uh, if you've got somebody who, who you feel comfortable sharing your early work with, I would recommend doing that like really early on. I, and I did do that. So I'm glad that I did. So the next step uh, for me was to lay this out digitally. And as you can see by this screenshot, I'm in InDesign. There's a lot of design programs out there. I already pay for the Adobe uh, subscription and so I have access to InDesign. It's kind of a challenge to learn. It's obviously got its own thing going on. It's not, it's not Photoshop, it's not Lightroom. Um, and in Lightroom, I think you can lay out photo books. There's lots of other more simple uh, ways to lay out books. Um, but I decided to spend the time and learn InDesign, partly because I don't mind learning new software and also because it's the industry standard in uh, print layout. And so I figured, you know, if it's what professionals are using, I want this to be a professional project. And so I'm going to learn it. And this is just a screenshot of the folder structure. So in here I've got you can see how many updates I've made to this project um, at this point, just tweaking tons of little changes. And with each of those, uh, I would work on a new version of a dummy book. So you're probably familiar with this term. Uh, it is a book that you make pretty quickly. This was my very first one. And I've got the pages just printed on a regular laser printer. I've got them glued together with rubber cement. Uh, so you can you can pull the pages apart and restick them somewhere else. And so this was like my kind of my first concept here. I've got these sticky notes because some of them ended up getting rid of. Some of them uh, you know I did or didn't like. And a lot of this, like I said, was a was a friend who I had helped me um, go through and edit some of this down. So that's what is great about these dummy books is you can make this super cheaply, just stick the pages together, and it's still it feels like a real book. And um, this is, you know, one where I was going back and forth between these two images. In the end, I actually didn't use either of any of these images, so it's kind of sad. Um, yeah, so this is, a, this is a super early on dummy book. I've got, uh, I ended up making a bunch of these. I think this one's a little later and these are at like half scale. So just to save even more money, I, uh, printed them half size. So this one's getting like quite a bit closer to what the actual book ended up as. Um, some of these spreads are in the, the final. So that's another version. And then I have a couple more. This one is closer to full size. I don't think it's quite full size, um, but it's kind of the same thing. I've got layouts and notes. So on this one, I said prop. Um, crop this. So I have just, you know, different notes for like, this one's too warm. Um, so this is a little like later on in the process. I've kind of set, uh, I've, I've settled on the layouts and now I'm just noting like this says lift shadows. So I'm kind of getting into some of the more detailed stuff. The layout still did change. Like this photo isn't in the final book. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, I was changing, making changes all the way up to the end. So here's another, uh, dummy book. And then this is, this is one where I was experimenting, uh, early on with covers. So you can see some of these are some of like different cover, um, designs. And so that's get back to the digital stuff here. So 
few more screenshots of the InDesign layout. You can see I'm working on text, uh, I'm working on like the title of the book. And this is kind of embarrassing. I don't wanna spend too much time on it, but it's all the concepts I had for the names. Uh, the name of the book ended up being 12,000 miles, but I had a really hard time just trying to come up with something interesting that wasn't, you know, stupid and still sounded interesting. So I uh, ended up with like an edited list and showed this to just a couple people um, and, and ended up on, uh, yeah, here, well, here's some more concepts. And yeah, I ended up with this idea of 12,000 miles. It's called that because that's roughly how far I drove that summer, or sorry, that year. Uh, and so I don't know, I just thought it was a cool name. So then I'm now working on concepts for the covers. Uh, I must have done a couple hundred of <laughs> these different variations. And uh, to this day, like some of them I really like, and I'm not, I don't know, I, I, I'm happy with how the cover turned out, but some of these also, are pretty cool. Um, so I'll just flip through these. Uh, at this point, I had uh, just I had come up with this idea to use printed. Um, so this is transparency paper, and I kind of wanted it to have this sort of analog feel, and so it's got it's got a nice texture to it. Um, that because it's printed on like a low quality printer. Um, you can see some of the noise and stuff in it. So I printed these out and I had tried these over the top of, you know, different things. So you can see in the uh, images here, I'm just like holding them up and, and seeing if anything sticks, which I think some of these are cool ideas. And uh, this is that contact sheet concept again. So like I mentioned, I saw that in a bookstore uh, super early on and uh, ended up laying out. So this is a, a actual strips. These are strips of film uh, laid out on a, on a um, LED light panel and like shot like that. So once I shot those, I you know did some color correction on them and, and kind of did some adjustments, but it is, you know, the full strip of film. So you, it's kind of cool. You can see, you know, everything that I shot on that strip. Um, and then experimenting with different ways to lay out that text. Uh, you know, how could I make it not feel too busy? I'm like working on different concepts. And you see, I've just got a ton of these. Um, and yeah, this is where I ended up. So it's got a little bit of that, um, that transparency texture behind it. It's got the words sort of covering up some of the images. And at this point, uh, I'm ready to talk about the printing process. So you're probably wondering how I got this book printed. Um, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of options out there, obviously local print shops. So if you live in a good sized city, there's gonna be a place that can print stuff for you. Whether it's gonna be economical or not, I don't know. I live, like I said, in Portland, and I really did want to try to use a local shop. Uh, I made a ton of phone calls, emails, and met with a few different printers. And in the end, the cost, just uh, printing such a low number, like I said, I think I printed 75 or so. Um, for a print shop, that's a super small run. And they're, at least the ones I talked to, really weren't too interested in uh, running that kind of a project. Um, I mean, I had quotes that were like triple what I ended up paying. So I started looking into a print on demand service. So if you go to Google, and you type in print on demand, you'll see sites like Blurb and uh, I think MPix. There's tons of companies out there. This one's Printy, Lulu, PixArt. Uh, and then there's a few other ones. So I think with the print on demand services, there's like those, the ones I just mentioned, and they work great for, uh, you know, you'll see a lot of people printing like their honeymoon photos or like a uh, album with like kids and stuff where it's, it's maybe not high the highest quality it could be there's probably not someone checking each one for quality control and you know making sure your color profiles match and stuff um, but there are a few print on demand services that i think are more geared towards photographers and towards artists uh it was a little bit of a challenge to find these because when you search photo book printer i mean there's just so much stuff that comes up so uh, a couple of these companies that I found uh, the first one is called Edition One Books, and they're down in LA. 
uh, and they do they do like oh sorry they're not in LA they're actually in Berkeley, um, and they do a lot of really nice like high quality art stuff. Uh, then there's another company called Conveyor Arts, and they're in New Jersey. You're welcome to check them out. Uh, they look like they have like some very high quality stuff. Um, and then another company called Paper Chase Press. They're down in LA. They've got a nice thing on their site where you can basically put in all of your specs for what you want to do, the quantity, the size, uh, paper, bindery type, all that, and it'll generate a quote for you right there, which is super helpful because even if you're not gonna use them, I mean, go to their site and then that way you can learn, you know, what papers are more expensive or what's the cheapest binding type. I mean, it's a good, that kind of thing, uh, with an online quote generator, whatever, just super helpful way to learn about printing if you don't know much about um, printing. So with each of these companies, uh, I was able to get some, uh, some print samples. And this is another thing I would really recommend. Like I had to, some of them, I think they just sent for free. Uh, other ones I paid for. And yeah, it was super worth it because you can see, you know, right away what the kind of work that these companies do. So for example, this is from Conveyor Arts. Uh, it's called Smoke and Mirrors. It's, uh, it, I think it's like a, it might be a quarterly or just like semi-annual like magazine they do. And so this is, I think it's mostly just to highlight like what they're able to do with their their printers. Um, and yeah, seeing this, like you look at it and you're like, okay, this is legit. It's not, you know, somebody's like little album that they printed of their kids. No offense to people who print albums of their kids. Um, but yeah, so this is, this was super cool to see. And then I've got um, a bunch of print samples from uh, these were from edition one. I actually went there and they gave me these so I could see them in person. Like really nice quality stuff. Um, and they sent me a few more. This one's from Paper Chase Press down in LA. And also same kind of stuff. I mean, I, I was really happy with, once I found these, I was like, okay, this is the kind of type of thing I'm looking for. Um, and I also, from these companies, got a few more, uh, I got some, paper samples. So this is from Conveyor Arts and it's not so much about print quality. Well, I mean, this one does have photos printed, um, but it's got all the different stocks that they use. So this is called a 60 pound uncoated. This is a 60 pound uncoated ultra white. Uh, so you can flip through these and you can feel like what all these are. Uh, here's all their cover stocks that they use. So super helpful. If you're interested in Conveyor Arts, get that. Edition one, also the same thing, a few different laminates. And then this is from a company called Smart Press, which uh, that's the company I ended up using. So I got this as a paper samples and each one is printed uh, with, a, there's a print sample on it and then they have listed the type of paper um, and all the way through their cover stops to their like super thin um, uncoated stuff. And then I have, I do also have um, print samples from them. Like this, for example, is from Smart Press. Uh, and I got a few more and I was happy with it. So I ended up using a company called Smart Press. Um, they are located in Minnesota and they're another one of these online um, print on demand services that can print in really high quality stuff. Uh, I mean, they're books that you would see, uh, the type of stuff you'd see in a bookstore, they can do. So that was the type of service I was looking for. Um, and one of the decisions I had to make along with several others is the binding type. So you can see on this screenshot, uh, lots of different ways that you can bind a book. And they also have a online calculator. And so you can put this in, you can look at the different sizes, you can see the cover stocks, the interior pages, um, and in the end, get a quote on what this stuff will cost you. So uh, the final step in design, uh, or I guess in the first step in, in the print process would be uh, getting a proof. So you submit your InDesign file, lots of different you know, uh, export options you have as a PDF and you have to make a bunch of complicated decisions about that. Um, you upload the file and then they send you back. This is called a soft proof. So it's a just a digital file that they've generated 
and it has on there it has trim lines and it has a, the fold area for the uh, pages and you also has crop marks so you're able to look through this and see your book as a PDF with you know all the way that it's going to be cropped and that your pages are laid out um, so once you approve that you have the choice to then order a hard proof and a hard proof is the same thing as soft proof they'll you know make you a, a sample but this one is real so uh, I don't have my original hard proof but I mean it's it's a full-on you know one-off version of your project and so I got that and uh, yeah it all it all looked good I submitted the order and went down to FedEx and picked up my whatever 75 books and yeah all everything was looking good I was giving it the thumbs up and then I opened it up and I saw this issue so take a look at that screenshot you can see the hard proof in the top like the texture in the sky you know just a nice gradient but if you look at that final print it's got this weird cross hatching pattern and I was like you know shit I guess it's not good uh, and I had a few other like there's a horrible example I had 75 books with this printing with this print quality all of them look the same and uh, so I got on the phone with smart press uh, I sent them this which you know is a uh, some images I had put together to, uh, you know to show this print problems I was having I sent this over, I said, look, my hard proof looked perfect. Whatever you just sent is not good. And within 24 hours, they reprinted the whole order, sent it to me at no cost and said like shipped it, it's on its way. So that's a major reason. The hard proof was 75 bucks, which you're like, you know, maybe you don't want to spend that much. But in the end, if I wouldn't have got the hard proof, I'd probably just get those final books. And I would have been like, well, I guess this is what I get. I don't have any real, you know, say in how this should look. Um, and so, yeah, kudos to Smart Press. I mean, they did screw up, so I mean, I guess that sucks, but they uh, fixed their mistake. So here's the here's the book. Uh, like I said, I printed it with that small booklet, so each one can't, comes with that. Uh, gives you all the like information, you know, for all the other photographers uh, out there who want to hear more, hear me talk more about um, the process of making it. Uh, and the cost and stuff involved. That's included in each one. Uh, I then started shipping them out. So I packaged them up and, uh, oh, I guess, okay, before that, all right, before I shipped them out, I did a little product photography. So I got my books, I got, you know, everything laid out, set up a little light box and uh, just shot a bunch of nice pictures. I'm thinking at this point, I'm trying to market this thing. So I've made the book, I've, you know, done this whole process and now I wanna try to sell a few of them, which that's an option, you know, maybe you're not interested in selling your book or if you are, maybe you're not interested in making money. I mean, you can print five of these and like give them to your friends. So, you know, I don't feel pressured to make this like a commercial thing or to, uh, you know, think you're gonna try to get rich. I mean, for me, the cost on this, uh, I think I covered, I sold them, you know, with, I make a few bucks per book and it's in no way enough to compensate me for my time or energy that I put into this, but it did cover the print cost. So it, it's, uh, I'm cool with that. So there's a few more of the product shots that I made. Uh, and, oh, there's that little highlight of the binding on my booklet that is called Saddle Sewn. And I did that all by hand uh, over the course of a few nights in the living room. And yeah, it was really gave it kind of a homemade feel. And that was, uh, that was fun. So then I listed it up on my website. It's no longer there if you're trying to find it. And uh, yeah, put it up for sale. So I sold it at 25 bucks for the book and the uh, little booklet all together. Um, shipping was pretty reasonable. I think it was like five bucks. And then internationally, it was a little more, just I had some trouble finding a cheap way to ship internationally. Uh, I put up this little mini site with information about it. And another big aspect for me, during this whole year, I was running a Instagram account called Film in the Freezer. You're still welcome to follow me, though there haven't been many updates since I printed the book. Um, I, I started this 
this out as just a way to like, you know, share the, the film process I was getting into. I was buying cameras and just shooting stuff. And it was fun to, you know, get, get that out there and share with people. Uh, in the end, I, it kind of turned into a, you know, I thought halfway through, I got a bunch of followers here. Like this is going really well. Um, I should end up, you know, trying to push my book through this because I, I figure if you're following me, like you've seen me, you know, go on these trips and, you know, you've seen these cameras like being taken apart and then being used. And so you feel you're probably somewhat, you know, interested in the final outcome. Um, so I did stuff like this where, you know, I said kind of A-B testing, like showing, you know, that which of those images look better. And I think that helped people feel like they were kind of part of it. You know, you, you saw it and you could comment, you could say, oh yeah, I'll use that one. And um, so, yeah, this was, I think was a really successful way um, just to share the process of uh, making it. And then in the end, a good way to market it um, just because, you know, if you're following me, like you're gonna be interested in it. So I didn't feel like, you know, it was, I'm coming in there trying to be an influencer or selling shoes or some, something that you're not interested in. So uh, this was kind of the final post. Um, I had Blue Moon Camera, they're a company here in Portland, feature me and uh, share this photo on their account, uh, which was cool. Got a bunch of, uh, bunch of likes and stuff from that and made some sales. So uh, yeah, that was that was the end of the project. And if you have any questions or want to have uh, want to discuss something, any more information you want, uh, leave it down in the comments. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you want to order a book, let me know. You're welcome to email me or also just put in a comment and I'll get back to you on exactly how to do that. Uh, yeah, I think they're 20 bucks. So yeah, uh, that's it. 12,000 miles, uh, comes with both of these. It was a great experience making it. And uh, I've just got a few more to get rid of. So let me know if you want them.